welcome to this deep democracy session. Um, I only have one hour uh, to introduce deep democracy, and I would like to take the opportunity to, in this hour, give you an idea about what deep democracy is, because not many people are familiar with it. Um, it's a it's a mindset of philosophy and a facilitation technique. So I'm going to give you a a mini intro in what deep democracy is about. Tell us, talk a little bit about who founded it, uh, where it comes from, what the ideas behind uh, are, uh, and then I will introduce just a couple of uh, key ideas with a mini exercise because deep democracy also has a toolbox uh, with amazing tools that bring you just just a tiny bit of a little bit of a different conversation uh, in your communities. Um, so I will let you have a, a little bit of a feel. Um, if you really want to dive deep into deep into deep democracy, um, a general introduction course might take you up to a day. Uh, and if you go really, really deep, the full level training uh, takes you, yeah, uh, it's four modules, uh, a bit like nonviolent communication training. So you go into models and then even into the deeper levels. Uh, but I'll, I'll give you some intro, uh, some information about that later at the end, in case you're interested in uh, deep diving. Now, we have this tradition in deep democracy to uh, open with what we call a inclusive welcome board, uh, because it already sets the tone. And I created one for you today, so uh, I'm going to read it to you. An inclusive, warm welcome to set the space and the container for today. So good evening, everyone. It's uh, evening here in Brussels. Maybe you're in another time zone, but a good day to you. A very warm welcome. Welcome to everyone who had to hurry here. Maybe you had to take care of some family or you had to take care of a friend. Maybe this is actually your lunch time and you're trying to get your lunch while you're listening. Welcome to people from all over the world here. An incredible international diversity. Um, we did a mini round already, <laughs> and we are already almost all over the world, well, on, on the West side, mostly. Um, welcome to the different worldviews, hiding in this diversity, hiding in where you come from, where your roots are, to the richness, hiding in the diversity in languages that might be present also in this group, and maybe also in the ways, the different ways of expressing yourself. Welcome to people identifying as a woman, as a man, as trans, or all of these, or none of those. Welcome to discovering new versions of yourself every day. Welcome to complexity. Welcome to you and what you want to show of yourself today. Welcome to whatever is alive in you today, at this very moment. Welcome to who is in perfect health. Welcome to who has a disease, visible or invisible, physical, psychological. Welcome to everyone that feels peaceful today. And welcome to people feeling turbulent and all over the place this week, last week, the past weeks. Welcome to anger also. Welcome to feeling sad. To feeling sometimes disconnected. Welcome to feeling exhausted, hopeless, and frustrated when you witness what is happening in the world. Welcome to feelings of hope. Welcome to feeling alive, to feeling sparked, to feeling connected with yourself, with others, with nature, maybe with the universe. Probably you feel all these things all the time at the same time, and you're completely confused very often. And a special welcome, because this is, after all, a deep democracy session, a special welcome to conflict, a special welcome to rage, to tension, to frustration, to all the no voices alive in your body and in your mind. And I kindly, and it's it's nice that we're just, oh, many people, <laughs> I have to switch screens. Um, sorry, I hadn't, uh, I didn't notice that and more people came in. Maybe we can, because we are, we are only eight, maybe um, we can add to the inclusive welcome that I've just been reading. Maybe you can add something like as a mini check-in, what do you welcome today? What feeling, what is alive? And 
Um, because this is a deep democracy intro, intro session and one of the bottom lines of deep democracy is the wisdom is in the no voice, I'm inviting you to welcome something that is not so nice. A mini feeling that you have in yourself and that you've been pushing away that was a bit annoying, like, God damn it, I don't want to feel you now. A frustration, a bit of anger, a bit of disappointment, something that's alive in yourself that's maybe not so positive today. And how do you welcome that? And if you feel comfortable, you can share that. We can do a mini round. And whoever feels like going first can go first. Yeah, I I was seeing uh, a couple of really lovely comments in the chat. Uh, Maria was welcoming the weekend. Priya welcomed curiosity. Uh, Andrea welcomed the snow and the cold. Uh, Maria was welcoming uncertainty. I was welcoming the, the tension of having another screen full of pending tasks. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Anything else? Uh, oh, Sean is welcome to trying to get everything done before the weekend starts. <laughs> yeah, it comes with a, a little bit of, oh my gosh, a little bit of desperation. I see despair. What else? What other mini no voices are in there today? Hi, uh, I am actually listening to this on a phone. So if I try to write it on a channel, I'm pretty sure the autocorrect will make whatever I'm trying to say in the wrong sense. So to honestly answer the questions, I welcome such things with, uh, or events that shatter your belief in certain values with a deep disappointment and a sense of helplessness. Is that yeah. an honest response? Yes. Yeah, feeling of yeah, feeling of helplessness. Absolutely. What else? I'm just finding the weather quite challenging. I know it's quite nothing new, but winters always make me slightly depressed because it gets dark earlier and there's nothing in your control. I've tried to go running, but I find it's quite difficult to run in the dark in the evening alone as a woman sometimes. So it's just an annoying thing. That's all. Weather. One last thing before we move on. What, what, what do you welcome as a feeling? feeling depressed a little bit because of the winter, the little hesitation that comes with wanting to go for a run in the dark and the, you know, adjusting to that, like mm, having to switch. That's a little bit there. Yeah, to the, to the knowledge or the, the thinking that slowing down would be the right thing to do, but I'm actually ramping up <laughs> as, the, as the autumn and winter comes. <laughs> Yeah, the polarity between wanting to slow down, but actually it's like you're speeding up. Yeah, yeah, the tension there, polarity. All right, I'm going to share because I somehow have trouble. I, oh, no, I can share my screen. Of course, I'll do that. That might be, um, oh. Mm. Something's not working. Wait. Sorry about this. There we go. Okay. All right. So for the new people in this group, I'm going to give an intro session on deep democracy. I'm going to talk a little bit about the iceberg, which is a very typical way of looking at groups. So for the newcomers, deep democracy is a philosophy and a mindset, and it has a toolbox for facilitation of groups. Um, to go just a tiny little bit deeper, the bottom line of deep democracy is that we always listen into the no voice, into the tensions in the group, like that you, you very often hear in meetings, la, la, suddenly there's a Lee, somebody that doesn't agree. And instead of pushing that, this mini disagreement, that mini no voice um, away, this becomes the superpower of deep democracy facilitation. Because if we don't listen to it, if we don't include it in our decision making, if we don't make that voice feel hurt, it will become a growing tension in the group and it will make the group explode in the end. So deep democracy tries to work with that no voice. 
So we're going to talk a little bit also about the sabotage line, uh, which is an ex a really nice tool to start recognizing where the no voice in your groups uh, start playing out. Um, like this, and then some tools, and we're going to see if we can practice uh, just a little bit. Um, Lean, if you can, if it's okay with you to click maybe on the top right this slideshow. Um, yeah, that, yeah. Ah. yeah better yes so what is deep democracy um the first one that took the word um deep democracy or created the word deep democracy was a guy called arnold mindel in the um, late 80s he's still alive he's running the process work center in portland um and he does process work which is more trauma and group related trauma work um and one of his key lines are, you don't see the world the way it is, you see the world the way you are, which is one of his uh, key mottos uh, in life, um, to really challenge your perspective and go inside yourself instead of blaming others, of course, and instead of assuming that other people see things in the exact same way as you do. Somehow it got stuck in just loading. Uh, so maybe let's go back to the previous thing. I don't know why the oh. slide giving okay. us a headache today but anyway I, I i think they were visible enough as as it is if anyone if that's okay with everyone uh if not let us is know it visible time. like this yeah yeah mm -hmm. that's yeah that's fine. i'm seeing some thumbs up okay cool um another one is what is in you is in me and what is in me is in the group very useful if you're in a group and you start feeling a little bit of chaos inside or you suddenly start like you're feeling a bit uncomfortable, most likely you're not the only one in the group. And this will become this awareness that you grow will probably become yeah, your biggest uh, advantage and your biggest um, yeah opportunity to start working in the group. And he invites you always to sit in the fire one of his uh, quotes is also harmony is a wonderful thing but not nearly as powerful as awareness so the deep democracy really dives in um that was arnold mindel he wrote a book deep democracy the deep democracy of open forums advocating for more people assemblies and for more people democracy where we actually talk about the things that need to be talked about um in the 90s, um, we had a couple in South Africa, um, Myrna Lewis and her husband, and they were asked by the government to uh, to guide a big process in an electricity company based of, of five where 5,000 people worked. Uh, it was beginning of the 90s. Um, it was post-apartheid, so there was a lot of conflict and a lot of segregation between uh, different groups of people. And they, had, they were asked to... Um, to start a trauma process healing in that company. Uh, they cut out the whole middle management in the company. People had to work together. Uh, and with the traumas um, that had entered the groups and the people, uh, it was very difficult. And they were asked to solve this problem. And they were they knew the work of Arnold Mindel, and they, um, they developed a practical toolbox and a method for inclusive decision-making and conflict resolution. Uh, and they started working with those 5,000 people in this company um, to start solving their own problems. And this is still the Lewis Deep Democracy Toolbox that is being taught today all over the world. Myrna Lewis is also still alive, and I'm taking actually a course with her at the moment uh, on becoming a, um, a certified uh, trainer. Um, and one of her baselines is mining the gold in conflict seeing chaos and conflict as an opportunity to grow. And the growth is, of course, um, growing towards the potential of the group, but the most growth is, of course, on yourself, right? Growing awareness, who am I, right? Uh, what are my pains? What are my struggles? Uh, what am I doing here? Where am I projecting on the group? And how can I be a better person? Like in this group, how can I grow awareness? Um, and then take responsibility with the group to learn as a breathing community and see all relationships that you have as an opportunity for personal growth. And then you can grow through to, um, to the potential of the group. So yeah, deep democracy, the only way out is in, right? And if you see the iceberg, 
um, there, um, the democracy often plays with conscious and unconscious. If you see the conscious as our mind, right? This is conscious. We see our facial expressions and oh my God, does our mind try all the time to get out of problems. We analyze, we rationalize, we think ourselves outside, out of problems, right? But the only way is in. And that is uh, what Arnold Mindels means with, and that's what the word deep democracy also stands for. Deep refers to going in the body, right? And especially Arnold Mindel works a lot with body work and, uh, and in process work, it's a common thing to really work with the tensions in your body. Where do you feel the pain? How can you go inside? And how can we reach the potential of yourself and then of the group? So let's sit in the fire. Let's dive in and see uh, where we go uh, deep. Let's go deep. Um, yeah, and another one, and then I, the larger goal of deep democracy is not me changing you and you changing me, but learning how we can relate, how can we work together. Um, all right, let's do a mini exercise. Um, I'm going to stop sharing just for a tiny bit so that I can see more faces. Let's do a mini exercise about this sabotage line and how it might play out. I'm going to ask you um, to imagine that you live in a town and the town is being ruled by an autocrat, dictator, mayor. Yeah, Maybe transform yourself to oh, maybe a couple of 500 years before now, right? So imagine you live in small houses, there's a town square, where there is like, I don't know if you know a guillotine, that sounds like Elon Musk, yeah, maybe we can call him Elon Musk, yeah, that's, that's actually a good idea, <laughs> oh, I, oh, I have an idea, okay, you just changed my mind, this is cool, okay, so imagine Elon Musk is like the mayor of the town where, where you are live, right, where you live, right, and uh, on the town square, there is a guillotine, you know, a guillotine, like the thing that cuts your head off, like this old medieval tool, Twittersburg, yeah. <laughs> and usually I do this with the potato king, where, where the dictator asks the uh, community to only eat potatoes. But let's do it like this. Like, let's imagine that Elon Musk is our mayor. He's a dictator. And he tells you that the only way to communicate in this town is going to be Twitter. Nothing else. No mails. No conversation, no WhatsApp, no Facebook, nothing. Twitter and only Twitter from one day to the other, nothing else. You live in this town, you have your social contacts, you know, you, you have your friends. Now imagine for two minutes, like just, we, we're just, we're not too many people, so we don't have to go into breakout groups, but imagine for just for a minute, how would you react being in this town, being cut off? from all other platforms, no Slack, no Discord, maybe that's a good thing, no Discord anymore, nothing, just Twitter. How, what would you do? You are limited. What would you do? So it's a authoritarian decision, you have no say. He says, like, no, oh, Twitter is good. It solves all your problems. You can communicate. Like, you don't need anything else. Can, can what would we say? You yeah, can, go can, ahead. Can. What would you do? We just do a round of voices and to hear how you really imagine if this would happen to you. What would you do as a person, as a person in this town? Yes, go ahead. Uh, I would actually calculate the probability of me. Uh, being able to employ a positive change somewhat. I will take a temperature check of the residents. And I don't have a better word for temperature check. Hence, I use the jargon. Uh, I will try to find out what other people think about this. And if as a group, the town thinks that he is just too powerful, then rational thinking tells me that if I fight this alone, it will be my neck on the guillotine. I will most probably try to move. So the first reaction I hear is that you will try to hear the opinion of others, right? Like as a first if, response, like if if there is if there is, I will try to understand what what uh, minimum viability strength do a community need to oppose this tyrannical decision, and without that minimum uh, viable group uh, resisting this move, 
if it is just me standing up and shouting in the town square saying this is not the way to go i will essentially calculate what are the chances that my neck would be on the guillotine and if that is higher than the other i'll most probably move cool any other voices i was uh, noticing myself uh, sorry i'll pass on straight uh, after i was noticing myself just trying to imagine what it what it would be like and trying to map what that leads to and 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 already like creating is some scenario planning strategic thinking and to do what actually don't know yet first to understand what it means to understand oh, yeah, nice uh, nice any I other echo sean's question right i mean my first instinct whether it's all twitter or if it's all potatoes is like you know just leave what else I kind of echo what Andrea is saying is that it's like in this world that we're working in now, I think there is a, a lower barrier to moving on. And if there is, in that case, I'm like, I would just move. I would just go someplace else. There's too many options. There's too many fun places to be. I, I would just pick up and go find someplace more fun that I that I could use Slack. No, something else. I guess I was probably thinking about, wow, this is such a relief because I hate the fact that I have so many different channels and I still find it hard to meet up with my friends because I've missed seeing Instagram or Discord or some LinkedIn message. I, I, I was thinking about the time before social media when we had a phone. <laughs> Uh, we could just use a phone and like a landline and you know make a call and make an appointment so maybe i just was getting romantic about this idea of great now we only have a single medium and actually we'll get to meet all these people which i probably keep missing on other channels <laughs> one more maybe Can I just come up and say, Sean, please take me with you as well? <laughs> if you know too many places that are fair, please take me as well. You can join. I'm inclusive. <laughs> Manuel, Tyler, or Maria, any voices, anything? How how would you react? Don't know. Hey there, nice to meet you. Yeah, I just uh, joined recently. So what was the question again? Sorry. No worries. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd have to go back. Um, so but I will explain and maybe and maybe give a bit of a summary. It's gonna it's gonna take us too much back to uh, to explain. But um, okay. Yeah, no worries, no worries, no worries, <laughs> no worries. But it's a pleasure um, to be here. Thanks for organizing. <laughs> and thank you for joining. Thank you. Um, so we're do doing a little bit of a of an exercise here, um, playing that Elon Musk would be the mayor of our town, and he would tell us in a very dictatorial, um, autocratic way, like, "Hey, we're going to use Twitter and only Twitter, and nothing else is allowed. And if you use anything else, we will cut your heads on the guillotine." Right? Um, and we were testing a little bit what would, what people would do. Um, a lot of us would move. And there's also somebody who's like, yeah, actually, this is not too bad. Like, it's it's a bit tiring to have all these options. So we'll feel like a relief. Maybe it will bring me more happiness, right? If we would do that with the Potato King, um, uh, maybe I'm going to use that one next, uh, next time. I think it works a little bit better. Um, what you see is that you have the whole range um, of people being more the opportunist. It's like, uh, oh, great. I'll start myself. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, a snack bar with potatoes. I will get rich in no time. I'm gonna, you know, do a cook a cookbook. Those are more the liberals, the entrepreneurs in the town, um, to the rebels who make undergrounds um, and, and 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 start importing couscous or rice or whatever they like uh, from other towns. Um, to starting a whole social movement of people resisting the mayor, uh, right? So you see all the ways in society, um, and it's super nice um, uh, because usually in groups, uh, it also plays out like this, right? In fractals, it's not the same as you having a potato king or Elon Musk saying Twitter, but if a decision doesn't land on you, 
like like you want it to land or if you don't feel hurt in the decision all these sabotage um feelings that you feel right now I'm leaving like if this company is doing it like that I've got a whole lot of other options I'm out I'm going to another company right or to another option etc etc right so these if you connect to yourself and in the way that you respond to an autocratic or when you respond to when your voice is not heard this is exactly how it will play out in your community as well and that's why uh, deep democracy is advocating so much for i'm going to share my screen again for listening to the no voices because the wisdom is right there the wisdom is right where people um are a little bit hesitant to share um right so if you see here the you can see my screen now yeah if you see here the iceberg that is the group right and there's a lot and the potential is all the way at the bottom there's the gold that's where you you know when you really go but there's the terrorist line in between the sharks right and if you don't hear the people and if you don't see the sharks and if the terrorist line starts playing then of course you have people moving before you reach the full potential and this is the resistance line is a is a is a nice tool to start using in your meetings for example um to see where people are ex are not expressing what they really think right and usually it's because they favor harmony instead of going to awareness as a group or or to avoid conflict a lot of people are conflict avoidant um, how do you see that in a more covered way um, people start making uneasy jokes they start laughing a little bit right um, or they start making sarcastic jokes that are not really funny anymore if you're aware of that then it's like what, what is playing there or they start finding excuses for not showing up in meetings not once but twice but three times um, they start gossiping um, it's a very human thing to do to start looking for allies right uh, and I don't know about the other cultures I'm I'm Flemish um, and a very typical thing to do here in Flanders like is that everybody says in the meeting yes 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 oh that's a great idea I'm gonna do that and then in the at the coffee machine they're like no way right and they start finding the allies between their colleagues like are you gonna do that he's crazy I'm not gonna do that like seriously I've got already so much to do and you start gossiping did you see what <laughs> you know and there's this bonding happening um in the in in the at the coffee machine um that is completely sabotaging the whole company right it's completely sabotaging the whole meeting because people don't dare to say what they really think at the meeting so it's in the Flemish culture it's really engraved um it's a real problem um it's it's the reason why some companies go move really really slow because nobody actually does what has been decided because of not being able to be authentic or not having learned to be authentic in a meeting um poor communication breakdown not sending emails anymore um active disruption um and then you have the anger outbursts in the meeting well nobody ever listens to me angry leaves that sort of behavior um or going extremely slow to of course um in society we see it now with the with the strikes the climate strikes for example you see a lot of strikes happening uh protests uh terrorism is also here right uh, big 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 no voices uh in society destruction um to um here also it's burnouts it's a more silent way of saying no to what is happening but burnout being disease uh, having a disease uh, having to leave work or society for a long time and our society has a way of dealing with this like hey you know you you go isolate for a couple of months like or even a year you go isolate take good care of yourself and when you're healed you can come back and this is the way that society takes care of this instead of bringing and providing a warm community we isolate people with their burnouts and their disease um, and when they are healed they can come back of course if the company hasn't changed things go back to normal I'm simplifying things to 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 make a point here huh and then of course there's war withdrawal um, and then you have the very open way of saying no and that's leaving it's moving out of the town of Elon Musk like hell no I'm not doing this I'm leaving you leave the company 
right? Um, you go away. So if you start seeing this and you create and you, um, yeah, you somehow nurture a little bit of awareness in that, like, or, or have a conversation sometimes, uh, like, hey, I noticed this. I notice that maybe a private conversation can also be a group conversation. I notice that there's jokes being made that aren't really funny here, right? And daring to put that on the table. Um, it requires quite a bit of a culture change and quite a little bit of growing um, from the team to, to go there. <clears throat> so what does deep democracy offer? Um, yeah, this is one of, you see the iceberg here again. Um, it has a decision-making model uh, that is based on a consent-making. It's quite, it's similar to the sociocracy way of, of um, making decisions. Um, but it it's also works with consent. It's in five steps. Um, you have debates, and we're going to do one at, uh, now in a minute. Uh, debating in deep democracy is, uh, is just a little different. We're going to try to do one. You have soft shoe shuffles to mine the collective intelligence. We do a lot of throwing arrows when it gets really tough. Um, and when we really need to create a space where things need to be said, need to be said, things that, you know, sometimes they're hiding. We throw arrows at each other. We do a lot, a lot of role mapping to make it impersonal, to sort of get the voices out and the roles out. And then we have those roles talk to each other which is uh, very often very interesting um, because you depersonalize it a little bit and then people can take it back inside afterwards. Uh, otherwise, it can get really rough. There's a couple of tools um, to do in, you know, to do conflict resolution when there's a, a conflict between two people. Uh, it's called a let's talk, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it's a whole toolbox of 40, 40 tools. I don't know if you're familiar with liberating structures. Um, it's also a, a toolbox. Um, deep democracy is very like it, it's they are they are very much uh, complementary, as I say. Yeah, um, it's just that deep, deep democracy is really about um, going deep into the body, whereas liberating structure is more on the when everything goes well, liberating structures goes really, it works really well. Deep democracy takes this this extra step in depth. All right. Are there any questions up till now before we dive into a little bit of an exercise? Is there anything on your mind could you, burning? Could you please share that uh, slideshow on the chat box, please? Is that okay? Of course. Yes, 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 of course. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. When I stop sharing, I'll, I'll definitely do that for sure. Yes. Any questions right now? And and on, I'm looking at the picture of meta skills, and on the left side, I see a guy about to jump into waters with big fish. What does that signify, if I may? Does that mean he shouldn't do it? Or Where? I'm looking at deep democracy, the picture of deep democracy. Uh, yeah. On the uh, under the umbrella, I see a person who's confused on uh, the ledge of the iceberg, just above water. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Yes, yeah. exactly. So I'm thinking, is he thinking of, is he confused as to whether to jump into the water with the sharks, yeah. the big fish? He's a bit uh, scared. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a very typical uh, situation in, um, it's, it's what we, yeah, there's a big alarm when, when groups do not make a decision. We are right there right now in, in uh, our DAO regions unite <laughs> very much on finance. So we keep circling and nobody dares to take the decision. This is the exact point where you feel like there's stuff under the waterline that's not being said. And we call that in deep democracy, circling and edging. We always come back and back and back. And it feels like the group is stuck, right? Like we're back to that, we're back to that. And there's, it seems like there's no breakthrough and there's no way out. This means that there's things that are not said, things under the waterline that are not being shared. And then the tools, the debate, for example, um, helps you if you then start doing a debate and really start fishing eh? because it, it sometimes requires a bit of an exercise to see what is actually... What is playing here? What is not being said in this group? What is unexpressed? 
and then a debate or throwing arrows or soft tools, all those tools then can, can then help you to go just a tiny bit deeper uh, and to go fishing. Yeah, there's a lot, there's usually like, it also has a lot about ranking, like um, what, what, what ranks are, are playing out in the group that we are, haven't been talking about or are not aware of. Um, assumptions that we have about each other um yeah and then you really you really dive in you take the deep dive what is playing in the group here why don't we come to a decision here um yeah uh, may i may i make a very a negative assumption and say that everybody in the top is colluding with each other because the stakes are so high uh, so you're looking up and you see about a, a table of a council of 10 people and all of them are colluding with each other, publicly fighting, but privately agreeing, uh, pushing something together, but fighting about it in the open. What does someone do in that instance? It seems like all the sharks are a team and you're just not fighting one shark. You're fighting like 15 species of sharks. I'm, I'm, I can't follow. Is this like like a comment on the on the picture or? I, I will go back. Uh, I, you remember you said that uh, this is the situation with regards to the region's uh, finance uh, part. At this moment, am, yeah, I, we have a situation like that going. Yeah, I am also part of a team that is trying to come up with a governance framework for a protocol, and somebody has been appointed with a lot of money to sit at the top. Uh, and he's inviting all the team members or the community to come together and form this. But any, they actually put something out. So when you suggest something that is so obvious, they agree to it in uh, public, but in, uh, and they say they are going to do this, but none of them take any decision. They did not change anything about it at all. So in effect, even though the sharks are fighting amongst each other uh, at the surface of the water, it seems like they're having a party at the bottom of it. Yeah. I think this is a perfect prompt for, for the debate that we can do. A perfect intro for, the, for a debate. Um, so the debating in the democracy is just a little bit different than, than a regular debate. Uh, we don't have a conversation. What we do here is try to define two roles that we have debate with each other. And we all first take one side and then we all take one, the other side. I'll guide you through it. We never do a debate or anything in deep democracy without setting the safe space rules, brave space rules. Um, there's three standard rules. The first one is there is no monopoly on the truth. What you say can just be as right as what another person says. It all is all context, it's all perspective. It's um, you don't see the world the way it is, you see the world the way you are, right? So you can be just as right as another person. We do this because we want to stay connected. You practice deep democracy and these tools in a group because you want to, because you want to stay together, because you want to reach the full potential. And you also commit to, we do this to learn something about yourself and each other. So it's, it's a commitment to the group. I want to be here. I want to stay involved, right? I, I want to do this effort. And you also commit to opening up to learning something about yourself, which is an invitation for vulnerability. It's an invitation for being authentic. Um, and that's once you start practicing it, I also put it in the title, it's sitting in the fire, it's lighting the fire in your team, but it's also creating trust because everybody, if everybody starts opening up and, and gets that invitation of, hey, let's be authentic, then, uh, then you also build trust and you really go through, uh, grow to a, a human, a human uh, um, company or a human organization. All right, so that were the Safe rules, no monopoly on the truth. We do this to connect. We do this to learn. Usually we go into a conversation about, is there anything else that you need? But I think for now um, we're set. We're going to do a debate between two roles. And that is one, to speak. Do I speak up about those people that say they're going to make decisions and never? 
Do I speak up about something or do I not speak? To speak or not to speak? We're going to have those, those two roles talk to each other. All right. And I'm going to stop sharing the screen. And I'm going to invite you to first all get into the role of to speak. What would be all your reasons to speak up in a group? Let's first do a round on that for two, three minutes. All the reasons to speak up. I am all, uh, because I've never been able to shut up. Uh, it has always been counterproductive. Uh, <laughs> whatever I have said, I've said it simply out of the necessity of not being able to shut up. It was never a logical decision. It did not do any good to me at all. But most often it is because I, by nature, I simply cannot shut down. If I shut up, I just move on. Okay. <laughs> because it's no other option. All right. Anything else? Why would you speak up, Andrea? This is a pretty comfortable role for me also. Um, but I tend to be the person who's really quiet. And then as soon as I hear something, somebody says something stupid, right? <laughs> the, so it's the reaction to what somebody else said. Well, no, I, that's not true. Or I don't believe that. Or there's a problem with that. And that drives me to talk. Now I know next time. We're now, gonna... It explains everything. I know, Daniel. <laughs> For, for me, it would be to inspire others to speak, right? I'm usually the one that'll jump off the cliff first. And that's usually because I've realized if I don't inspire that, everyone nods their head, says yes. And then when the meeting ends, they all come to me and want to talk about it anyway. And then I'd waste hours to two hours of my day trying to work through issues that could have been worked through in the meeting. So I'll call people, call on people post speaking um, and do anything that I can to try to, you know, especially when you have a deep understanding for those within the democracy, right? And you know, kind of where people's heads are at, you can guide conversation by leading to speak and hoping that others will participate. All right. I hear some sense of responsibility. I hear a sense of inspiring other people. I hear a sense of urgency in the voices here like oh, I cannot shut up now I see a sense I feel a sense of no it's just a, we have to do it like there's no other option here like come on what else is there why would you speak So every now and then, so every now and then I'll throw out an idea that might be contrarian just because I think contrarian ideas help people think differently. Um, even if I may not be 100% be supportive of it, just because they, in our organizations, I think we get settled in with too much groupthink and people are just like, yeah, okay, I'm here, but I'm really doing something else. So if you throw out something contrarian, you kind of shock people and they wake up and then they start participating. I feel like I contribute to the group by sharing out of the box ideas. So part of responsibility. Yeah. Take my responsibility. Sometimes, nice. sometimes you just have to check authority to make sure that they know that they're not always just right. Oh. <laughs> if no one else is going to say something, you know, and if, if the group consensus traditionally, like at the water cooler is no, but everyone nods. Yes. Somebody's got to say something. And then usually I resonate with the fact that they're not always right. So I'll be I'll be the one that has to do it every time if, if I must. I hear a rebel. Nice. <laughs> a bit of a rebel. <laughs> Super cool. Anything else? Priya, do you have something? Why would you speak, you think? Uh, I was just, I put a note also in the chat. I, oh, I guess a lot of speaking also comes down to some of the cultural values and beliefs. I know that some people in some cultures would not talk like say in a meeting, but would resolve things one-to-one -one offline because there's a concept of saving face in certain cultures. So everybody will nod. And yes, it's it's not just the coffee stuff, but I think there is different ways in which you can have a conversation. And I understand that like in a democracy, if you think about everybody speaking and everybody, everybody being heard, but if you really try and not focus on the concept of democracy, but more about uh, how do you arrive at a, a consensus? It could happen in a synchronous or synchronous. A team meeting might not be the best place to force a decision. There are other ways to carry on. So 
I, I, I personally feel like in the end, it's about being effective. If you want to bring energy to a meeting, yes, you can be the, the clown or, you know, you could say something to enlighten a meeting. If, if you know how other people work, you might do it in a way which helps them save face. So it really depends on the context. Okay, I'm going to catch the, the part in your, because you were making bridges already, I'm going to catch the part where it says, like, I speak, and then I heard the voice, like, sometimes it's the most effective thing to do to come to a decision, to speak up, right? I'm going to take that one and add it to the yes voices. I'm going to do it because it's most effective in some context, but we leave that behind for a bit, right? It's most effective. Daniel, do you want to add one? Um, Why you speak? Yeah, well, there was something about um, adding perspective when you have a point that hasn't been considered. Um, like, I don't know, I, 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 I end up in a lot of debates where I feel that people are just missing the point. <laughs> and then you speak. Yeah, because I'm like, no, they, just, let's just cut to the chase. It's about this. Okay, because you know better. I'm, I'm teasing a bit. <laughs> no, but like, I mean, that that's the assumption, yeah. So yeah, that's, yeah. Um, all right, because I'm, I'm aware of the time. Let's switch to the other side. And I love this because I feel that we have a lot of speakers in the group, right? We don't have, we don't have a group of shy people. So, okay, put your feet in the other side. Why would you shut up? Why would you not speak? I don't care. I don't care. That's the only reason I keep silent. Ooh. When something is happening, I don't really care about this anymore. When you stop caring. Yeah. Yeah, you're burnt out. You've tried to resolve problems before. You know your voice is, isn't being heard, even if it's being used. Then you always say, wow, when you don't speak, it's sabotage. Interesting. Or... I don't know, as a as a facilitator sometimes when 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 the thing is happening and I, I don't need to do to put any any extra effort or something. Like essentially it's already working. Let me not shake up what is working well. Yeah. For me, it's often um I, I I am listening. Right. It's very easy for me to like leap in and start talking, and I am sensitive to the fact that that pushes other people's voices down um but it's interesting because for me that's a point in time shift it's not a role to role i'm not the person who doesn't talk or the person who speaks up i am like i am now listening not speaking okay yeah is it a way of sensing into the group like which role has not been picked up yet and then the listening role or yeah yeah and making sure it's out there i also um is asking a question the same thing as speaking up because mm -hmm. that's my brand actually mm. is the person who sits there really quietly and then asks a question and everybody goes like oh shit you know <laughs> we didn't think that yeah it, it depends on the context probably right, where we can so. categorize it under speaking up or yeah I have I, I have an award back there for the person with like the um, I have to get the right phrasing. Um, he uses inquiry as a weapon, right? The when you ask a question and it's an intense like an undermining versus an open question of just I'm trying to to help lifting that out. So, but my short answer Don't. is yeah, you know, <laughs> a thread has heard that has had me had that do that to him. A last one? Not not personally, but I know people don't speak out of fear sometimes, you know, depending on the authoritarian structure. Um, they feel that if they were to try to rock the boat, that there could be like, you know, backlash or reprisal from it. So. Yeah, out of fear. Yes. All right. Yeah, I'm aware of the time. I only have five minutes, but I'm going to close it here. Um, is there anything... In this debate, so we've researched just a tiny bit, we can go on and on uh, about this, right? We can go deeper and deeper, but is there anything that was, that touched you in a way that was surprising? Something that you learned like, oh gosh, oh wow, yeah. About in the no and in the yes, like to, in the speak and the not speak. I want to echo Priya's point about the importance of saving face, of saving other people's face. I think that's key. 
anything else that you learned like oh I like how you draw the line between the no and linking that to that's going to cause all the other discord that you're going to hear so if you get to the no acknowledge it even if you don't solve it maybe some of that discord that happens later on goes away so I I think that's powerful yeah I'm a bit inspired by the irreverence with which the gentleman said hey I am not gonna fear away from fighting the authority I'm a bit inspired in that sense here I did graduate from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, which is the running rebels. So it's kind of like imbued in me. Um, so my, I remember my dad telling me when I would complain about corporate, you can't be a rebel forever. And I'm like, no, but I literally am forever. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I actually wanted to. Um, yeah, I mixed it up a little bit. So uh, usually when you do a debate like this right and even when you're when you're when your organization is like on the circling and edging and we cannot have a decision define which two things which two polarities are playing is it to speak or not to speak but mostly it's, it's something else a polarity and have those two roles debate each other on this like all stand in this side all stand in that side and then instead of going towards a decision immediately like ask people like hey what touched you what new insight did you get like oh my god I had no idea that Priya would you know I was always assumed that but oh wow it really touched me seriously and usually when something touches you it is a very nice opportunity to go a little bit inside right like shit why 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 why, why did I suddenly feel angry or frustrated or and then you invite people to be vulnerable and to share that because that's where the gold is and where you actually can grow to authenticity uh, with the group. All right, I'm going to see. Uh, yeah, I'll send you the slides. Um, I added a quote in the end of a lady that I admire a lot, which is called Margaret Wheatley. Um, she's written her latest book is called Who Do We Choose to Be? She talks about... Um, new leadership also uh, in the new science, a more quantum and holistic way of of being a leader and uh, she talks about the importance of relationships everything in an organization is relationships and the more authentic you can relate right um the more powerful your organization becomes um so that that's her philosophy well that thank you very much uh this was a very very brief into into deep democracy i can go on for three days if you would like and 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 have you explore all the 40 um uh, the tools and there's so much in there so much in there to work with in a different way than just talking about practical stuff you really also go like getting to know each other the relational weaving without it being too it still stays professional but it's relational weaving uh community building so voila can i ask a doubt if i'm me when you uh, in the previous instance, when you stand up to opposing faction, factions to a debate and ask them to engage in this activity of thinking when you might speak and when you might choose to be silent, uh, contrary to what you mentioned, is it also not a possibility that the terrorists become more indoctrinated uh, and the pacifists uh, decide to be more passive is it, it is it that does it not pose a, a problem that it might polarize these opinions further is it not a possibility when you stand them up in a group and you hear as a crowd to uh, to two opinions and there is a crowd which believes in one thing and the other crowd believes in something else even after listening to each other's perspective could it might it not lead to more polarization is it mm -hmm. not a risk most of the tools in deep democracy will actually not go to expressing opinions and perspectives um, they go just a tiny bit deeper but it takes a little while to understand that your opinion that to to sort of disconnect your opinion with you as a person and it takes a little bit of time to get there with the group like this is just a voice that is alive in me right it's just a voice and I express it 
And with the save and the save the brave space rules, you really invite people to question that. And if they decide afterwards, if they become conscious of the patterns and the strong opinions that they hold, then they can choose themselves to stay in there, yes or no, right? But it becomes a really aware, it becomes a conscious process of really going deeper and deeper in who am I actually? It really invites, who, who am I, right? Who, who do I choose to be in this group? Um, is it my best behavior to really, really, you know, stand in my perspective? Maybe sometimes, yes. And I think climate activists like Extinction Rebellion, for example, at this very moment, they really choose to stay in that no voice. And it's powerful. It's very powerful, right? Are they activists in every aspect of their life? No, but they make the conscious choice to do this. And so you can start with this awareness this aware of what you're doing. You, you, this, is, this is a beautiful way of relating because it's very authentic. Um, and yeah, anyway. <laughs> so in, in, in the talks and in the tools, there's very rarely like a person-to-person -person, uh, perspective and opinion fight. I, it, no, actually never. <laughs> um, I might so. be stupid and... Uh that I might be stupid in my question, but are we, uh, when we say this, are we assume, are we not assuming that people are, including myself, I'm not a uh, dissect or they're removing me from my question now. Are we, uh, are we not, are we not assuming that people are capable of acknowledging the mistakes in their opinion and going back and changing them? We are assuming a certain level of of, of goodness, what if the stakes are so high? For example, if there is a financial motivation to remain false, but despite acknowledging that what you are saying is not true, how does it affect this practice, if I may? Again, I'm, I'm, I might be naive. <laughs> See you, Andrea, thank you. <laughs> you were waving, Aya. Uh, um, well, I, I, I don't know, like, um, I'm, I'm gonna quote, Arnold Mindell here, like the, the goal of deep democracy is not you changing me and me changing you. I'm not going to change you. I, I'm looking for a way to relate to you. And that starts within me, not in you. Like you have no responsibility for that. Like, no, I, I take my own responsibility. I know it's a little bit like, ooh, it's the, I know. I know I sometimes get really angry with somebody's opinion. I really, really do. But yeah, I cannot change that person. That's I can only change myself. Like I can only start with me, and and choosing who I am. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> it's also a bit of a soft way out. I know that. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you guys. Have a good day. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.